What's up, everybody? We back at it with another episode of Kicking Flavor. Man, how you feeling? How you doing, dog? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. Like, uh, Somebody can explain about yourself. Man, good. You know, just stay busy trying to get this get this joint rocking. But before we get into what shoe we got on set today, yes, sir. let's talk about shoes on foot today. Oh, okay. You, you, you want? I mean, you know, I just stepped out with the. Hold on, let me pop them off. Uh huh. Uh, that is. With the terror squad. Yes, sir. You know, tell them, tell them tell a little bit. Please. I mean, <laughs> if you don't know what terror squad is at this point in your life, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. But for those who really just don't know, my man Fat Joe uh, ended up getting a collab with Nike. I want to say these came out in the early 2000s too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But I do know they recently released them in three different colorways. You got the black and white joint, yep. uh, powder blue and white, and red and white. Yeah. So there's some some simple for the people out there. You right. Really can't go wrong with them to be free. Right. So, you know, something nice to have on your feet and in your collection. And they got the original uh, tag right there yes, too sir. from the Air Force back in the day. They don't know nothing about that. Though. Before they made the big red. Right, yeah. yeah. They don't know nothing about that, though. But type, I mean, I know this shoe is your favorite. You yeah. got a few few of this style in your collection. 36 to be exact. Oh, man. Okay, I wasn't expecting it to be that number, but uh, here we are. <laughs> but now, uh, so this is uh, Reimagined Ones, Lock and Found, modeled after the Chicago Ones. Uh, yeah. One of the original colorways from 1985. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like you said, just one of my favorite shoes. But this particular one, I just had to have in my yeah. collection, just because it has that pinches look to it with the cracked leather. Um, the the sole is a little yellow. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you really can't go no, wrong. 100. percent Not even just with this, but with a pair of Jordan ones, right? Tiggy. Yeah. So that's why I got 36. So I feel like I got. I, I think I'm at like 12, 15. I'm gonna catch up eventually, but probably not. We gonna see. Yeah. <laughs> But let's get into it, you know. Yes. Uh, today, we got the red pandas. One of the dunks that I think has a very distinct look yes. and can't get confused with any other uh, dunk or, or anything. But just before we get into talking about the shoe in depth, do you think that the red panda name and the idea of the red panda was a spin on the black and white pandas? Um, you know, the, the black and white pandas have been going crazy on social media, in stores, uh, out of stores, on feet, whatever, the pandas is running around. Um, and, and people is, I think my pandas, I've turned into work shoes. Yeah. So just because I knew that it got so big and so popular that it wasn't even anything of value in the collection. So I turned them into work shoes, which might sound crazy to some, but. Not. So just talk about, I mean, I know there's there's an actual live red panda that, you know, running around and everything. So. Just talk about how you feel about the difference between the regular pandas and the red pandas, or if there is even any correlation. Uh, as far as the regular panda goes, it's just, it's a regular shoe at this point to me. Uh, I see it every day, like you can't get away from it. Mm -hmm. um, so when they introduced the red panda, I was eager to see what right. was gonna come about. And it, 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 yeah. Yeah. it exceeded all expectations for sure. Um, just with the hint of this like dark burnt orange off of that brown right. with the cream coming through it. Yeah. I like it. And the texture. Yeah, so this is more like the bag is just like a regular like new buck suede. Mm -hmm. This is more so like a little fairy rough suede. Yeah. Uh easy to clean. So I mean if you get a little stain on it, get you like a little soft bristle brush. Nothing too heavy because you're gonna mess up. That soft bristle brush. Yeah, bro, that soft bristle brush will get you right. Yeah. So, because especially with this type of material, you mm -hmm. can fray it even more. You don't want to do that. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, it's just, it's a very fall shoe, fall winter like shoe. I would not wear this during the summer. Gotcha. If, you, if I see you wearing this during the summer, I know you don't know that. We're gonna have some yeah. condition. Because, so, <laughs> like, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't sit with summertime, springtime vibes. vibes. Yeah, so. Cause it, it definitely has that very warm touch of, uh, uh, of course with the with the texture of it, it, it looks like fur yeah. as well. So you know, you don't so have to wear your mink coat in the summertime, so why have your feet sweat out? That was a thing when they, uh, I feel like it was a thing when they was making the shoe, just to kind yeah. of get the, the fur texture of it. Cause if you look at, cause if you look at this shoe, and go look at a red panda, top of the head, going into the body. Basically. Gotcha, yeah, 100%. So, um, 
But let's get into the food side of let's things. How did you feel about how did you how did you feel in the kitchen? I know dumplings dumplings are a very hard thing to accomplish, let alone for it being our first time yeah. making dumplings. I do I will say they came out very big, which is okay. Compared to most dumplings, they're probably half this size. Yeah. But I think we started at a good spot because we can learn our technique. Um, and it might be a little bit harder with the smaller, smaller wraps and things of that nature. But just talk about your, talk about how, how you felt in the kitchen and everything. Uh, I mean, honestly, it was, it was different. It was weird. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of getting the, the, what is it, like a, a wrap? Like yeah, the round town wrap. Yeah, yeah, so just trying to get that to stick and yeah. having the little folding technique. And yeah. I say, brother, this is my <laughs> fault. One of the, I ain't gonna say it was just hard, but it was very like tedious. Tedious, 100%. Just try to get those intricate folks. Yeah. But I feel like for our first time, like you said, it came it out pretty clear. Yeah, pretty yeah. damn good. And, and dumplings are normally made with pork, but I know you try not to eat a, eat pork and stay away from it. So we did do a ground chicken in yeah. the dumplings. I appreciate you. Uh, hey, come on, you know it's all love. You know, but look out for you. I know, I know before you know. Okay, but um, and we also made up our own rendition of a eel sauce shout out t you know um he he, he told us what to do just because he got a little ties into the community yes yeah, sir yeah he so that man yeah right there, <laughs> he said lock in, lock in. Oh, but, uh, but let's let's uh taste it and you know we have some panda express just to tie in to the red panda and everything like that that is not a stamp or anything like that's no promo that's just what we felt fit good with the shoot so let's try the dumplings before we dig into some more facts about the shoe. So before we do that, you know how to use chopsticks? No, no, I don't. I mean, me neither. Let's so try, let's try. Oh, you gonna put me down. Let's see. Hold on, y'all. I think you, hey, hey, hold on now, okay. I think you go bottom two and then cross like that. If I don't, if I'm, I think, oh, okay, okay. Hey, like that, like that. Yeah, now. You know, I'm doing it right? Somebody in the back, am I doing that right? Yeah. yeah. Let me see if I get the hold on, let me see if I get the grain of rice. No, I'm gonna just quit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, while I'm hold on. Hold on, oh, man! Okay. Hold That's on, hold on, man! Hey! Hey! That boy going crazy with the chopsticks, chopsticks out there. I feel it, I feel it. Oh, okay, I'll, okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. Wait, then. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, now let's see if we can get the dumpling going. Hold on, I'm gonna move my fortune clip. We gotta open those in a minute. Get my sauce out. This is sauce we made at the uh, in the kitchen, y'all. Um, let's see how I'm gonna do this. I don't think that big ass dumpling gonna fit on, <laughs> on each other. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you. Let it not drip, okay? Mm-hmm. Right here on the pot. Bang. I think we did our time. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Put it up. Mm-hmm. I can eat an order of these for real. And be satisfied. Not fact. It's a good little appetizer. Real, really a good meal. What are you talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's fine, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that's the shit. I'm saying right to live. Might as well. Okay, let's get our. I'm gonna let you finish chewing, but we'll let's get our fortune cookie ready. But the crazy thing is, I really don't even like fortune cookies. Yeah. Have you ever ate the penny before? <laughs> <laughs> This cookie, dog. They say you gotta, they say you gotta eat some of the cookie for it to come true. That's what I heard on the street. I gotta eat all the cookie. Damn, no one of the fortune cookies, man. They're wrong. I do not be eating that joint. Nail one up. Nail one. Okay, let me see. Mine says, I ain't eating this cookie. <laughs> now nah, mine says you are caring and compassionate. Says a tantalizing new prospect would come your way. Damn, that's my cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's my fortune. 
question, bro. <laughs> I'm too late. Damn. <laughs> I ain't even gonna eat the rest of that. I ain't gonna eat that. Yeah. You gotta eat that later, bro. So you yeah. come on now. But no, yeah, let's get let's get into some into some fun <coughs> fun stuff about the shoe. Um the shoe was released when? 1985. 1985, like I don't even think that was jeez. I'm 26. That makes my brother 27. He was born 87, so two more years. That's 39 years ago. Yeah. Took me a minute to get to that. Yeah. To get to my that oldest brother. My oldest brother, he just turned 40. Yeah. yeah I think he was born in 83, 84. Whatever, yeah. Because I can't get off the top of my head. Yeah. That's so, great. Uh, but in the basketball world, 1985 was that was yeah. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to say, that was probably, that was so, probably the stuff was lit. You had Jordan. Come out, Jordan Warren's came out in 1985. I want to say that's the year he won Rookie of the Year as well. Okay, we're gonna get to that too. Rookie of the Year, Jordan Warren's. Just wait, yeah, just wait. Get them coming. Uh, but when they released, uh, they released into seven NCAA D1 basketball teams for the, from the first go round of it. But uh, what are those teams? You had Kentucky, uh, Michigan, Iowa, UNLV, St. John's. Uh, Syracuse and Villanova, and they all got their distinct, you know what I'm saying, colorway. Michigan, probably, Michigan or Syracuse probably had the hardest. Uh, mm. which one are you thinking? I'm gonna say UNLV. I think I got yeah. those too. I think I have those. That red with that wood gray and the white. So I don't got those. Yeah, yeah, now nah, it's a different ball game, though. Oh, them. I got the UNC. You my fault. It's a different ball game. Different, different uh, African. And then I also like the Iowa joints too. That remind me of the uh, Wu Tang. Dunk. Gotcha. So can't can't go wrong with neither one of them colorway. Really can't go wrong with neither what well, set out of the whole set being completely honest with you. So naturally, naturally these shoes started off as basketball shoes, yes. but transitioned into skateboarding shoes. Now, have you ever tried to get on a skateboard, hit your little, you know, when Tony Hawk was back busting and well, I can hit you with a mean little kick push and be done. <laughs> I didn't say, brother, I might, I'm not, nah, I'm not that first on the skateboard, but yeah. I do know I got a couple of homies that's like that. Yeah, I like that. On the skateboard. So. Man, you won't catch me on no skateboard. No, no. I think T used to have a little skateboard and try to try to run around the, sh- the streets with a little skateboard and, and he, he tried to get me on it, but I think the skateboard skated up under me. Oh. And it was a rap for the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I kind of stay away from skateboards now. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, but I do, like my, like I said, my homie, my partner, shout out to Roman. Uh, he put me onto a lot of the history of SB as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like you said, it became popular amongst the skateboard culture. So in like '96, I want to say that's when. Nike started to try to implement their foot into mm-hmm. the skateboarding world, but they didn't release their first shoe till 2002 in the actual brand itself. Right. Nike SB launched in 2001 with the help of uh, Sandy Bodek. He was the right hand man to Mark Parker for a while. And you know what I'm saying? He had the opportunity to build his own SB team yeah. and launch SB, which just so happened 2002. First Nike SB came out for Ray Gun White. And that is a premium colorway. And it's gonna pay a nice little nice dollar for that. For that nice man. little dollar. Have you do you think where we are with, with shoes and reselling and everything like that? Um, how do you feel about the price of dunks? I know some dunks, all shoes have different versions where yeah. are colorways where it's more expensive, but just the overall number, I think if you put it in collectively. Dunks probably run probably like 120, 130. Yeah. So, yeah. do you feel like that's a good price or? I mean, depending on whether it's a collab or a regular release, yeah. it can vary anywhere between, like you said, 115 all the way to 130. Yeah. Um, I'm not a fan of like reselling like that or mm-hmm. even like resale prices. Cause right. Some stuff just don't be worth. But I be going to the mall, they be talking about three hundred fifty dollars, five hundred. I said, bro, for some dunks, these not even J's. Like, nah, true. but nah, some colorways just kind of. I understand the price. I put them joint right back on the shelf. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, no, I understand. Cause I'm not paying for it. Oh, no. so I can't get it for retail. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Big, big the. Hmm. Cause I do got. I got a couple pair. I got the Jackie Robinson joints. Yeah. That's a nice little piece. Yeah. And I got uh 
I got another pair of cold stuff. It's like a powder blue white with yellow, like little hints of yellow. Bro. Oh, I, I see. A, I wanted those. And that's the lightest little price. I'm trying to think of what. What do you know? Any ones like premium ones that I have? I mean, I know I have the U those. That's a very. That's a very premium one. What that's a premium. Um. One. I, mean, I got a whole bunch of them, really. I think a lot of the ones that you do have, or outside of like stuff like this, like mm-hmm. this one, the Udo George you yeah. got, is more so it's just like a general, like just the colorway. Like I, I have a lot of the, the Jordans, uh, the Jordan One Lows. Yeah, those colorways are pretty good. Um, I have like it has two different shades of purple. I don't know the, the name of that one. I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know the name of top my head. Yeah, so I mean, got a different different couple pairs, but. Of course, you know, our thing that we want to do in every episode is give people a couple pointers on how to lace the shoe and how to style the shoe. Now, I know you can always go with the classic lace on it, a dunk, yeah. but let's give them some fun. I mean, I don't know the names and loops and pools, I know, but not at all. I know thinking, you know, you know, you know a little, little something. I'm very simple when it comes to like lacing my shoes, as you can see now. Yeah. Lace them up to the third eye, so tied mm-hmm. it up. Slip on, slip off. Slip on, yeah. Uh, but with a lot of my dunks, I like I said, like the last episode with the Air Max Runs, mm-hmm. I like to keep the factory lace. Yeah. It's just something about a factory lace on the low top shoe that just that you like, just do it for me, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So I think for me, you know, I always take the I really just I really take the shoe out and I loosen it up, have that loose wear. Yeah. And then tie the um tie the knot on the end so that it stays and doesn't pull no matter yeah. uh, how I'm going to how I'm going to wear them and if I'm going to be real active yeah. walking around moving around things of that nature so really loosen them up like this so and then cool. yeah. and then put uh, put the knots on the ends or you can do them on the inside whatever your steez is whatever you like um, and keep it pushing like that but sporting wise you can go multiple different ways it depends on what colorway you want to highlight um, you can go with the cream pants, yeah. kind of like, you can really go any, any style pants, the skinny bottoms, the flare, um, the fitted look, uh, anyway, uh, I would go with a cream or a light khaki vibe, and then up top, I'm either, I'm going brown or the orange, yeah. and then really just sport it that way, so that's really, really my vibe. These, with dunks, well with this dunk, like we said, it's fall, winter vibe. So I would put on a sweater that has, you know, maybe the same, the same kind of vibe on the top. If you really want to yeah. go crazy. Yeah. Yes. But it sounds like a little jacket. Yeah, yeah that, that go. Like Cause this, this, this pattern is very similar in a lot of yeah. that, that type of vibe for the, um, the fall winter, uh, look, but how would you style it? What you, what you styling up? Uh, so for me, like you said, I'm real simple, but I'll probably try to find me like a burnt orange shirt. Yeah. Just to kind of highlight that. That's some blue jeans. Uh, don't I, I, I wouldn't even put blue jeans on this one. What you going? I wouldn't. I'll probably like try to find yeah. this, this type of color pants. The khaki type of Sit yeah. on top of that. Because <clears throat> I don't want to be. Because the, the denim blue pants are kind of like. Clash a little bit. Yeah, and I don't yeah. want to do that, so just kind of keep it simple. It's either that or a black pen, but I ain't really rocking. No, nah, I don't like with the brown. I really, I'm, a, I'm really not a big fan of the brown black one. No. Yeah. It depends. If it's it like, gotta be like, because I've seen it done right. It has to be done the correct way. Like, I do have one pair of shoes that have the brown and the black in it. But I'm not wearing black on top of something that doesn't have black in it, like the brown. If it's brown, the only so time, for those shoes, if there's no black in there, yeah, no, nah. I wouldn't stack a black on top of it. The only time I'm doing that, putting black and brown together, is if I got on like the Palomino ones that mm-hmm. just came out, yeah, or the Mocha ones. The Mocha joints, yeah, they're on the weed. Well, we got a little, little something to them. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that really be my only, yeah. my only style point on that. Like I said, factory lace, yeah, loose it up. <clears throat> Try to tighten it up a little bit and let it rock out. Let it rock out. Hey, we done hit you with another episode of Kicking Flavor. Yes, we sir. appreciate y'all tapping in, and we can't wait to give you more on the next thing. We got the heat on the feet. Let's do it. Yes, sir.